Okay, hello and welcome to part two of this series. Like I said previously, what we're going to be doing in this video is continuing on pretty much from where we left off um, by creating the actual view server page, which is where all the sort of status interesting stuff is going to be going on. So let's just basically get on with it. So let's go across to our code. And the first thing we're going to do in the view server page is do a little bit of error checking. And we're going to do this in a very simple way uh, compared to how we have done previously with the sort of errors array method. The uh, reason for that is that we don't want to do that many checks and also um, we don't really need to show an error message because this the user would only really get here by following an outdated link or by um, deliberately changing the variable in the URL to try and do something, I don't know. So anyway, what we're going to be doing is, I mean feel free to use the more extensive error checking method if you like, but um, that's not really the point of this video so I'm going to sort of use the quicker method. Anyway. What we're going to do is check to see if the variable in the URL that defines which server we're looking at is not set. So we're going to use the simple isSet check on the server ID. However, we want to know if it's not set, so we're just going to stick an exclamation mark at the front, which means not, basically it checks it against false rather than true. Or they have selected an invalid server. So for example, we have four servers in our list, if they change the variable in the URL to be server number 5, then that's obviously not going to work. So we need to catch that condition. And to do that, we're going to use the empty function. And we're going to see if the information for the server they selected is empty. Because if they picked an invalid ID, there won't be an array there, and the empty will return true. So we can use the config variable on the server's array or server's key of it. And then in these final square brackets, the ID of the server, we're going to use the get variable SID. Not side, SID. Um, just as a quick note, make sure you're careful with these square brackets because, for example, this here, if I type it like this, it well, to me anyway, that happens to look quite right, even though it's wrong, because this bracket here doesn't have a matching right hand or left hand or right hand, whichever one. I don't know my left and right, um, I was thinking of the way it curves rather than the way it, the side it's on, but whatever. Um, <laughs> this bracket doesn't have a matching pair, so just make sure you add that one. It looks a bit odd with double square brackets. Anyway, so if it is empty, we're going to simply redirect the user back to the server list. So we'll just use a simple header redirect here, or location header I guess I should say, back to the server list.php. And then once we've redirected them, we're going to kill the script because we don't want to process anything once the browser has left the page. So we can give that a quick test actually. If we just go to our browser, hit reload, we stay on the page, which is good. And if I just make that undefined, we get redirected back here. If I just click on this server and change it to something stupid like 78, we get redirected back. So that's tested both of our checks and they are both working, which is good. So we'll just click on this again and I will go back to our code and then what we're going to do down here is define two variables um, one of them is going to contain the server IP of the current server and one is going to contain the server port the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to be using the server ID a couple of times sorry server IP um, and the variable, f the variable that contains it at the moment is quite long and horrible and it's just a little bit awkward to work with it's not very obvious that that's what it is so for the sake of simplicity of coding and readability we're going to create a new variable called server IP and this is going to be equal to this complicated thing here and then the first element of that array that is resulting from that complicated thing there so this bit here basically is equal to one of these depending on whichever server they have picked so we clicked on the top server so that'll, that bit that I highlighted a moment ago will be equal to this and we want the first element of that which is the IP for the port we'll just have the second element pretty simple right? so let's go back here and we'll define another variable underneath this called server port server port and what I'm actually going to do is just copy this down like so and change the naught to a 1 easy enough okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try and get the information on this server. So to do that we need to create a function which is going to uh, return the information 
by querying the server and you know seeing what information it returns. So we'll define that function before we do anything else. So let's go across to our backend file here and we will create a new function and it's going to be called fetch server info. And this is going to take two parameters, first one being the server IP and the second one being the server port. Okay? And it's going to return an array of data or faults if the server is offline. But before we get on with any of that, what I'm going to do is just leave a quick comment as to what this does. So it fetches server information um, I don't know, that'll do. Why not? You can think of a better comment if you like. And then we'll go back to our uh, serverless page. I'm just going to nope, uh, view server page and I'm just going to define a new variable called info and this is going to be equal to the result of that function which we haven't quite created yet. So fetch server info without that bracket and we want to pass in the IP and the port so server IP P and server port without that zero okay there we go so now we've, just, we now we've called that when we're doing our testing we don't have to forget and wonder about why nothing showed up so back to the function and the first thing we need to do is try and open a connection to the server and the way we do that is by using the f sock open function and what this does is well it opens a connection like I said um, and then you can use that to read information, write information, that kind of thing. Well, like, not that kind of thing, exactly that. Anyway, this function takes uh, five parameters, I think, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, the first one being the server IP, second one being the port, the third one being the error number, which is a variable which doesn't have to be defined, and if an error occurs, a number representing the type of error will be put inside that variable. So then you can use that to check why the connection failed. Similarly, a description of the error will be placed into the error string variable. We're not actually going to be using those, but they have to be defined um, so that you can use this fifth parameter, which is the timeout. By default, this is, I think, 30 seconds, maybe less, maybe 10. Um, however, you don't want to be anything like that because it realistically, it's not going to take more than a second, half a second to connect to the server. Um, and any longer is just going to make the page load really slow for the user and it's going to look like something's broken. So I recommend no higher than one second for this. Um, however, it's obviously up to you, but um, I'm going to be going with 0 0.5 because that seems to work, sort of how I've tested it. And if this connection fails, it will return false. The function will return false, that is. Otherwise, it will return a variable not a variable, it return a pointer or a sort of resource that you can use to communicate with the server and that is called a socket so I'm going to find a new variable called a socket like so and like I said this function returns false if the connection fails so we can just do if socket that didn't make any sense socket is equal to false or is identical I guess I should say we'll just return false at this point to indicate that the server is in fact offline. Okay, so once we've done that, what we're going to do is write a packet 254 server ping, which is what the Minecraft client sends to the server to indicate that it should send back the server information. So the way we do that is by using the f write um, function, which takes two parameters, the first one being first one being the pointer that you want to write to which in our case is this socket second parameter being the uh, data that you want to send which for us is a string or was not a string it's a number it's basically 254 um, but it has to be in one byte I think I don't know I do know but anyway <laughs> so the way we do this is by using slash x and then fe which is the hexadecimal code for uh, 254 okay um, by the way these do oops, these do have to be double quotes and depending on your syntax highlighting you should notice that this has gone red for me if these are single quotes you can see that it just stays standard string color obviously that might be different for you but we'll just make sure you use double quotes for this and that tells the server that it should send back some data so what we need to do now is read that data and then process it 
So we can get the data by using fread and this takes two parameters, the first one being the connection and the second one being the length of the data you want to read. Now the longest um, data that the server will ever send back in one of these packets I think is 241 or something like that. I'm going to use 256 here to be safe I guess and also because it's a nice number, it's nice and round. <laughs> Um, that's literally the only reason. It doesn't matter. Um, it'll also stop reading once it gets to the end. So you can set this to anything as long as it's greater than 241. Anyway, once we've got the data, what we can do is check to see if um, the correct packet has been sent back because the server should reply to our 254 ping with a 255 kick. Um, but just to demonstrate what's going on, what I'm going to do first is just do var dump data. And now we should see exactly what the server has sent back. So if we just go to our browser again, and I'll hit reload, you can see we get this sort of funny looking string here with a kind of invalid looking symbol. And then you can, if we just look at, ignore all the awkward symbols and extract the important bits, you can see that we have the MOTD here and the number of online players and the number of offline players. Okay, so that's good. Um, it looks like it's basically worked. If the server was offline, this we will well we wouldn't have got this far. But uh, if this wasn't a Minecraft server, for example, we wouldn't have got this back. We would have got something weird. Um, I can't really be able to demonstrate that, but trust me. Um, yeah. Anyway, let's go back to the code and clean this up so we can actually use it. Well, actually, the first thing we'll do before we clean it up is we're going to check to see if the server sent back the right data. So we're going to take the first character, the first byte of the data that's sent back and check to see if it's equal to 255 because the first byte of any packet that's sent back from a server will always be the packet ID and the packet ID for a kick message is 255 okay so I mean, all this sort of Minecraft stuff is a bit technical um, I'll put a link to a blog not a blog a wiki in the description which has really good technical documentation type stuff about the protocol if you're that bothered and really want to know what's going on then you can look at that Anyway, what we're going to do to check to make sure this is, is actually a Minecraft server is check to see if the first character, which we can get by using a substring on the data, naught one, which will take the first character and only one long, one long, one length. That's what I'm trying to say, I think. Anyway, so we'll check to see if that is not equal to another one of these weird strings, but this time instead of fe, it's ff, which is the hex code for two five five. Okay, and then if that's true, we're just going to return false because it means it's probably not a Minecraft server that we've connected to. So then, what we need to do is extract the um, actual important parts of the data. So what is actually returned is the first byte, which we've just extracted and checked here, is the packet ID. Following that, the, the two following bytes after that, or characters, are the length of the string but we don't need that, we just want the string. So we can chop off the first three characters and just take the final part and process that. So what I'm going to do is define a variable here, data equal to substring, data three, like so. And that will just remove the first three characters. So then, if we just do uh, var dump again, oh, <laughs> well, yeah, that happened refresh it now and you can see that we have basically this first bit kind of missing so that's good however these characters are still invalid as you can see and the reason for that is that the game sends back a sort of weird character set of data if you like of, of string um, so what we can do is convert that to a standard character set by going back to our um, code and we'll use the MB convert encoding function to convert the string that is returned which is the first parameter and also the result of our substring we want to convert it to UTF8 which is like the standard good character set I guess and we want to convert from UCS-2 okay I think I need another bracket there nope and now if we hit refresh again we should see that the weird triangular symbols 
have been converted to these little whatever these are called and also notice that the string length has reduced quite significantly um, that's just a sort of quirk of var dumping a sort of invalid-ish character encoding okay so what we need to do now is just basically process this to get the data out so what I'm going to do is split the string by this character and because I don't have that on my keyboard I'm just going to copy this and go back here and we are going to explode the result of the MB convert encoding function so we'll explode it on that weird character like so and then if we refresh this for the final time you can see that we have three sort of parts here first one being the MOTD second one being the number of players online and the final one being the total number of slots available note that these final two are both strings even though they are actually numbers um, we'll address that in a moment so let's go back to our code and the final thing we'll do is just have this return an array so we'll just have it return a new array and we'll bring this down for the sake of simplicity and we're, we're going to give it three uh, parameters the first one being an MOTD and that's going to be equal to just straight data zero because that was the first element next one is going to be players and that's going to be equal to data one and the final one we're going to call max players and that's going to be equal to data two like so now really to be sort of proper about things we should have these numbers because these are only ever going to be numbers actually return integer data types so we need to convert these strings into integers so what we can do is use the int val function on both of these strings and that will then return a um, number okay so if I just put that bracket in that is this function pretty much complete in fact it's entirely complete so I'm going to end this part here and then in the next part we'll complete our server status page using this function um, and also there is one thing I'll mention but I'll do that right at the end okay so thank you for watching and come back for part three where we'll create the status actual sort of page bit